Uh, Rural broadcaster and historian uh, Rafe Heidel Manku joins us for more. Uh, good morning to you, Rafe. Good morning. So, how much of a slimmed down ceremony is this going to be? Well, you know, the, the coronation ceremony is one of our great contributions, I think, to civilization. You know, it's up there as, as far as I'm concerned with the works of Shakespeare and with, you know, Turner's paintings. It's such an exquisite ceremony. Normally, for, for the Queen's coronation in 53, which was based upon that, those of her father and grandfather, George V and George VI, it was around three and a half hours. Now, we're told that the current plan is to have a coronation ceremony of only around an hour or so. Are you outraged? Um, well, you know, let me just put it, put it this way. We list our heritage buildings. We have grade one listing for the Houses of Parliament. I think the coronation ceremony deserves grade one listing. Uh, I used to be a friend of the uh, Maharaja of Drangadra, a wonderfully erudite old Indian prince, the last man to rule his kingdom before independence. Uh -huh. And he was a very erudite man, a scholar in Hindu, in Hindu stuff and Judaism and Christianity. And one of the plans here is, of course, to make the coronation service more diverse, more representative of modern Britain. But he he wrote to me in 2010, and I just want to quote what he said. He said, If the coronation ceremony in its traditional form and all its glory is abandoned, I shall mourn its loss as an exquisite part of our world heritage. Mm -hmm. It would be like the wanton destruction of a national or indeed a world monument, say Stonehenge or the Taj Mahal. And that's someone who's a Hindu prince, not somebody who's British or Anglican. Yeah. There is a beauty to that coronation service. We're the only people in Europe to actually crown our kings. No one, nobody else actually places the crown on the head yeah. or has the anointing. It's a very important tradition and an important ceremony. And I'm just slightly wary of these attempts to try to make everything seem to be relevant to the modern age. Some things actually are, are timeless. But do you not think that the king is mindful of all of that as well, though? I mean, he's not somebody who wants to take a sledgehammer to the monarchy. He just wants to be respectful of the mood of the nation who are struggling to heat or eat in their homes. He doesn't want to be parading his wealth in a way that, you know, is perhaps unnecessary. Uh, but at the same time, he will want to make sure that the crown gets the coverage and, and admiration and, and pomp that it deserves. It's certainly not my place to criticise his majesty, and I would never <laughs> want to criticise his majesty. Um, but there are merely, my comments are merely sort of suggestions for his advisers, yeah. perhaps, to take on board at these early, early stages. But you know what? It's at times of gloom and doom that we actually need these sorts of occasions to unite the nation. We saw that with the, the, uh, the wedding of the Queen in 1947, just after the war. We saw that with her coronation. They galvanised the nation together. And I think this coronation could actually serve to much that, much that end. And, of course, who are the critics. The Owen Joneses of this world are a minority, actually. I think people overestimate the criticism that will be there. The great unsung people of Britain, I think, would love this. Yeah, I guess, I guess for, for King Charles, it's about um, reaffirming and establishing that really solid connection with the people that his mum had. And so in doing that, would you say that that connection is more important than the pomp and ceremony of a coronation? Oh, absolutely. It's more, the, the, without the support of the people, there is no monarchy. But we've, we've seen the king fulfil that excellently in the first few days after his mother's death when he went out to Scotland, to Ireland, to Northern Ireland and to Wales, connecting with the people and, and ensuring people realised he was a king of all parts of this kingdom. Yeah. Uh, what, so what, what, what are the actual parts of the ceremony that you're worried would, would go and that you'd like to see? Captain. Well, there are, I mean, when you're cutting off two and a half hours, where do, where do you begin? Well, but there are, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of ancient ceremonies involving the peerage, but things like wearing the coronation robes. Normally, you have all the members of the House of Lords and the peers, the dukes and the earls, wearing their coronation robes, which are being held in storage. There's no cost involved in any of this. They're not being made anew. And now we're told perhaps it'll be just lounge suits. You know, I mean, if you're going to have a grand event, I've always used to say that the uh, inauguration of a president in America is a cheap form of a coronation, really. Mm. Let's actually keep the grandeur that we have. Yeah. We saw the great glory of the Queen's funeral. Everybody loved the pomp and pageantry there. It will be a shame to lose part of and that. And will it be a big bank holiday weekend? It's the same weekend, isn't it, that Platinum Jubilee was this year, so next year it'll be a big sort of national party. Is that...? Yeah, we, we, we assume so. It's taking place on June the 3rd, a day after the coronation of Her Majesty the Queen, and actually it, it will be 70 years to, to the day, plus one day after the Queen's own coronation. Um, I just want to ask you about the front cover of The Sun this morning. Morning. Uh, they're talking about the the crown, which is about to come out uh, on Netflix, which uh, shows a, a sort of segment about it about Prince Philip pursuing an affair with Penny Natchbull. Um, lots of upset from from royalists that this is disrespectful. So shortly after the death of Her Majesty the Queen, uh, whether it's true or not. Yes, there had been some hope 
that uh, saner heads would, would um, decide to perhaps delay the release of the Crown in some capacity. Mm. You know, the people have to realise the Crown is actually a work of fiction. Mm. And I've just been watching, you know, the, the Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix documentary, mm. and at the beginning they always say, this is a work of fiction based on historical events. Something like that sort of a disclaimer is well overdue for the Crown, because particularly in Canada and America and Australia, people watch that as if it's a documentary, and unfortunately they get to these... Yeah. these, these, these... They're going to be disappointed about... James Bond, aren't they?